Something that N3N does very well is help that transition from the abstract. You know, when you're looking at a graph or a chart on a screen, that's very abstract. What N3N does is bridge from that abstract, that intangible, to the physical world. Something that you could, in theory, go out and actually touch and get your hands on. So overall, the, the opportunity to work uh, with our hand, uh, who brought me in, the opportunity to work in such a phenomenally fast-growing uh, space segment, uh, and the opportunity to, to move back and forth between the intangible and the physical, the abstract and the real, really appealed to me. So I wanted to find something much smaller. Uh, there was a group of people that made those companies as successful as they were, and I wanted to be someone who could make our company, N3N, really successful and be a part of that small team to get it off the ground. The second reason I would say I joined is because of the technology. I would say it's, it's cutting edge. Um, we're IoT, big data, and that's still a relatively new industry. And there is a lot of excitement and opportunities that come along with that. Uh, first of all, the ability to visualize business operation is a very unique concept. Since it contains more than just a video feed or a data feed, like others in the market would do, and as far as I know, particularly in the Valley, uh, various kind of solutions which makes us unique to conceptualize based on uh, design thinking uh, concept, which allows on the other side the customer to be very innovative and create a new common language how to operate their businesses with our solution. Um, and once I saw N3N's technology, um, just from a, a demo from one of the colleagues, I was so intrigued and so impressed. I mean, the technology I was working with before was, was quite impressive, but nothing like N3N. I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, it's definitely the future, and just uh, happy to be a part of it. On Star Trek, there's the Starship Enterprise, the whole spaceship. And aboard the Starship Enterprise is a designated section or the command center. And in that command center is where they do all the data analysis and where all mission critical operations are performed. So they have absolute control and limitless visibility on what they're doing. So for me, it was just that picture of seeing Star Trek and it was kind of fascinating. You know, we met N3N in one of the conference in Vegas and we were amazed by the, by the visualization that, that N3N brought, brought up. And uh, so we just had a meeting and you know, N3N came to Cisco office and we had a discussion and we were totally into, into that, you know, the product and we liked it. And then, uh, and then we implemented with it. So we, the whole project was done and it went to the VP level, you know, the vice president uh, in Cisco he was happy and everything went smooth. And then uh, out of the takeout from that project, because I worked in Cisco like six years, and uh, the takeout uh, from that project was, man, this, this product is so innovative. I have never worked a project like this before in my 10 years of career. You know, I, I was, I've been a Java developer. I've worked in so many other different companies, not only Cisco, in different companies in India and in the US. So that made me think like, man, I have to do something, uh, you know, innovative, or I have to be part of something which is innovative, which is creative and which uh, open doors to the market where I know, I know the importance of uh, manage, performance management and you know, anything we are talking in terms of the entering technology. So then I've decided and, and you know, we had talk and I joined, I joined N3N. Yeah, uh, when I have to describe what we do as a company, I always say that N3N is creating operational intelligence by aligning people and data through visualization. And then when I talk about our solutions, I would say that our solutions, um, through our solutions, we're giving our customers limitless visibility into their operations, but also providing them absolute control over them at the same time. What we did in Carnival was we captured uh, the location of people on board, customers on board, right, our guests on board by their device and by the access point, right? So we were able to capture that. So the same thing can be implemented in, in any other field, such as, you know, you want to uh, 
you can, I, I, it's as easy as putting in a Bluetooth chip or something on a, on a, on a device or on a person or animal or something like that and then you can locate the person based on environment and things like that so that is that is one of the uh, fits or one of the implementations that we could probably see uh, so for last one year we have been having different we have been into different verticals like we are into health care industry, we are into data center migration, we have done uh, smart cities, uh, we have done, we were in Carnival Cruise, that is one of our biggest uh, client, you know, potential clients that we are looking for. We are into different sectors, different verticals. The, the major issues that we solve, everybody has a problem, uh, every company, I mean, every system has a problem. So the main focus everybody looking for is how, how do we, how, you know the MPT or MPTD, right? The mean time to resolve and mean time to detect. That's their main main area. It, being that as a main focus for management, the clients that we work with, uh, the the issues that we tackle as of now. For example, when I take data center migration, it's uh, we are talking like uh, thirty thousand servers in in a company. It, just to give an example, right? So to migrate those thirty thousand into complete a different environment it, it's not it's not an easy task it takes months uh, after we implemented the uh, of course the client everybody knows it's maximus so after we implemented this uh, project uh, actually they said they came back to it and said within 10 days they know what are the things they have to do they have complete list prepared for uh, you know for this data migration process so this is one small example Uh, every year you can look at the numbers. This is where all the venture investment happens. This is where the innovation happens. This is where the ideas happen. This is where people try and fail until they get it right. This is where they sense the market and respond and test and fix things and adjust. And it just will not happen anywhere else at a scale that it happens here in the Valley. And it's just exciting to be a part of it. The, the Valley, which is innovation, right? which is the innovation machine, the lock for the planet. I, I, don't, I haven't seen personally anything better than in the valley uh, in the density of many things, right? of uh, the intellect of uh, people who are uh, very competitive. So everyone strives to be the best and that at the end brings to everybody globally the best solutions, back, best technology, best use cases so that all uh, on the planet benefit from whatever we do or people like us do. And that's what I believe is differentiates the Valley most from anywhere else in any other place I have seen. Uh, you can drive around and see Facebook and Google and LinkedIn and Salesforce, and they all offer great opportunities. And I feel that I could succeed at any of them. But I think what they also symbolize and represent is the idea that you have the ability to change the world. These companies did it, they've made a global impact, and I think that's why startups in the Bay Area are so um, prevalent. Uh, there's a lot of VC funding that helps them get started. Personally, I think it means everything. Uh, we are the mecca here in the Silicon Valley for technology. Uh, we attract some of the world's greatest talent. The world's greatest tech companies are all located here. Uh, I think you know, kids around the world uh, who have a passion for technology uh, dream uh, about coming here one day to work. So, you know, I just find it very fortunate that um, I'm here and, uh, you know, and striving. Yeah, so I joined as uh, Director of Marketing and Sales Operations. So at a company like N3N, where we're at now, what that really amounts to is lead generation and, and filling pipeline. Uh, so it's external marketing, uh, it's analysis of the market, analysis of the verticals, it's developing messaging that's appropriate on a per vertical basis, it's making sure that the salespeople uh, have prospects to talk to, uh, it's also internal marketing, it's uh, you know keeping morale up, um, you know doing events and activities that uh, keep the employees energized and excited about working here. You know, I always say that there's really three audiences that you're speaking to. Uh, the first audience is your prospects and your customers. Uh, the second audience is the investor community. 
And that's true whether you're a you know, venture-funded startup or a publicly traded company. Uh, the other audience, the third audience, is potential employees. Because to build those smart teams, to build those strong teams that amplify the strengths of the individuals, you need smart people and they need to know that it's a good place to work and that there's opportunity there. So I joined N3N as the Chief Operating Officer to lead our sales and marketing operations and to strategize on what could help us to scale this company in the future as well. So as part of my uh, job, I also not only uh, build our new sales and marketing team with the best people we can get in this valley. Again, we should not forget it's a very competitive environment, so we're competing for the talent with others as well. Uh, to build a force uh, like a SWAT team rather than a large army because we're still a small young company and we need to try to find the best people uh, and that's one of my tasks to recruit the right sales and marketing team. So I'm an account manager. Uh, I'm working with some of our biggest customers to make sure that they understand our product, know all the different features that we offer, uh, and are really trying to find success and value from our platform and making sure that they continue to invest in us. But as we are a startup and continuing to grow, I have a lot of experience in project management and product management. And because it is that startup mentality, uh, there's just times where you kind of have to step outside of your official role and just help out and make the company successful in any way you can. So I find myself also dabbling in a lot of other areas uh, just because we need to get things done and that's what we need to do. For me, it's breaking into new accounts and new verticals that we haven't, um, you know, attacked yet um, or haven't had any traction with um, or don't have a specific use case for. For me, that's going to be a big challenge. Um, you know, a lot of customers, especially in my experience in sales, they want a vertical specific use case. Um, here at N3N, types of verticals that I'm going to try to go after, we don't have. But for me, that's motivating. Um, I'm very hungry in that sense and I know I can break into these certain accounts. First of all, you know, our, our goal, our common goal as a team is definitely to become a market leader in the IoT visualization space and also to be able to dominate perhaps few of the verticals like hospitality, retail, uh, distribution centers uh, where we might excel much better than others and be the best which will also uh, secure our place maybe in the top three players in the market in our market space. You know this is what we do here in the Valley. We take a technology innovation and we find a way to commercialize it and then we make it grow really, really fast. And you know, that's what I want for N3N. Uh, you know, we need uh, focused efforts, rapid growth, and uh, you know, a successful company. And that's going to provide, you know, first and foremost, is value for our customers and value for our investors. And if we do that, we will create value for the employees and you know, everybody will be happy. We have a canvas. Anything can be painted on the canvas, right? So uh, it could be uh, it could be data coming in from a video, it could be data coming in from an image, or in a typical IT term, it could be a JSON or an XML kind of data. Uh, we are not limited by what data we can visualize, right? So we we have the technology, and then we have the partners here in Silicon Valley, like Cisco, AT and T and things like that, who can go out to the world and sell us, and sell our technology. So that is, that is our main point here, and that is how we can sell or we can grow into the IoT space. Cisco, AT&T, they are big players in IoT today. So they are going out to the cities, they are going out to various countries to build a smart city and things like that. And we are, we are partnering with them. We have the right uh, uh, partners here. Yeah, like I said, we, we, everybody is big on bandwidth, and then we, are, we have the right patent to save bandwidth. Everybody wants to use videos and cameras and do the smart city. We have the right partners who can take us out there 
and then we are on in the right direction. IoT has, I mean, it has a lot of revenue and a lot of companies are, uh, all, I would say most of the companies are bragging about IoT these days. Uh, they, uh, the main focus is they have a lot of data but they don't know what to do with it. As a visualization company, we exactly can put that data into a place where any, you know, it, it'll make sense out of, you know, it'll make sense. People can make sense out of the data or people can make sense out of, you know, what exactly the IoT data can do. So, uh, that, I mean, th there is a huge growth opportunity for IoT because, you know, for example, in uh, India, there are 200 cities who are actually trying to implement the whole smart city concept. And we are already in, in I would say, 10 of most crucial, you know, cities. We are already in, uh, you know, we, we are uh, in terms of contracts or in terms of talking to the clients, we are already uh, in place with, uh, with those guys through uh, partners like Cisco and m So these are the guys, uh, Cisco, of course, everybody knows it's a big company and they're well into the market of IoT. And also, uh, we have done, we have uh, partnered with Cisco again for one of the biggest clients uh, in, uh, in US and Mexico, which is AT&T. So we have been doing uh, uh, coordination with Cisco and we've been working, uh, you know, regularly with, with AT&T to make, you know, bring that smart city uh, possible and very soon because we have deadlines coming soon too. Uh, so uh, we are going in the right direction in terms of uh, because we partnered, we channel partner with uh, good companies that we were, uh, who can bring us the kind of uh, opportunity that we are looking for because we are the company who can make it possible. I mean, we have the best team uh, I would possibly imagine. Uh, so that's the, that's the side of growth. So I think there's, uh, if I wanted to look more into understanding how N3N can apply as uh, a solution for some of these other bigger issues. We talked about environmental, we talked about um, education as an, as an opportunity, but even maybe endangered animals. They're endangered because various reasons their habitats are growing smaller, but also people are still interested in ivory and getting tusks from elephants and the horns from rhinos. And I, nowadays, even like Google is working on this, where they've actually started putting sensors inside rhinoceros' horns or uh, putting more live cameras along the natural habitats of these animals. And we can collect the sensors from the rhinoceroses. We can collect the, the video from the, um, the savannas and the, the, the brush in Africa and actually pull all that together in our screen so that if someone's monitoring them, they can see that someone, like a poacher is coming or like has you know, penetrated some type of barrier or border and that they've come in. And, I think right now they have issues in responding in a timely manner. And so if they're being more proactive and they're getting these alerts through N3N's platform, they can more quickly react to these types of things and hopefully save those animals' lives. Sports, right? So there are so many sports that happens and then uh, it's, it's so difficult to track all the sports. Uh, there's football, there's soccer, there's baseball, there's cricket. basketball, cricket. So many things that are happening. So the, one of the easier implementation was uh, is is probably to pick in the right feeds or the highlighted alerts or highlighted feeds from any sport and say, okay, something just happened on this sport if you are interested, right? So showing a global map, showing a highlight feed, saying, okay, something interesting happened in this sport, and then you might be interested in it. And then now you want to see what the user is doing or what the user is following and then we can put in our analytics to see okay what he's following and show him the right alert based on his uh, trending. Right? So that would be another implementation that is good. Uh, you know, if I think about an animal that might be a good metaphor. You know, the company's like a lynx. Um, very powerful, very strong. Uh, we're still a little bit stealthy. We have uh, some really good things happening that we're, uh, we're not able to announce yet. Um, but uh, we are on the prowl, for sure. And, uh, you know, we have got untapped potential. If you think of a, uh, think of a lynx crouched, ready to pounce, you know, that's sort of where we are now. Do you know the 
a bird eagle that that is what comes to my mind you know why it, it flies so high in the sky it can see so many things and it can also see the tiniest things like an ant and that's what mtn does so we, we see the tiniest of things and we give you an overview and then you can drill down to the tiniest of things and then find what the issue is and where the issue is so eagle is probably the best example for me, it's quite simple. It's just two words that speaks volumes to N3N. Limitless visibility and absolute control.